What I was looking for is a company that would worry about the employees and the employees could worry about the company. Dreams do happen. It, it would not happen without the people. Everybody's doing the best they can. The sky's the limit. We've got a lot of dreamers in this company who are making it happen. This company started under the basement steps on a one-shelf deal. Uh, a construction company that will go to any degree to make sure the customer gets what they want. I understand that this company is built around experienced tradesmen. Almost everyone in this company has worked and earned uh, their education, their knowledge, their experience. There was a lot of times uh, through injury and weather and everything else that I considered doing something else, uh, considered getting out of the business. But uh, I really found a quality of person that I really admired in this business. Uh, a lot of pride in what they do. You find a lot of times that you meet people in this business and they will take you by jobs that they've worked on and show you. You know, there's like a pride of ownership. That is something that comes from the old school. Uh, we will give any employee any opportunity to advance that they want, but there's certain ways in, uh, in the growth process, there's certain ways that we go about doing it. I came here uh, uh, on a part-time temporary thing to take a look at the accounting system and see if they could make it work. I guess originally I wasn't even supposed to stay. Uh, but you didn't have to be here too long to see the potential that it had. Well, starting out as a laborer and moving up to a superintendent and Mike's taking care of me pretty good. He's a good boss. Good boss, good man. The growth that we've experienced thus far has been a controlled growth. We could very easily let it get out of hand. We're, we're going gangbusters. There's a lot of people looking at us right now. It's pretty neat watching people, you know, that, that start out bad and now are good at their craft in all aspects. I mean, that's even the project managing, estimating, even all, all the way down to a labor. It's, it's kind of neat to watch someone grow and evolve. If a laborer wants to become a carpenter, we will send them to school. Okay, we'll make the schooling available. We will pay for the schooling. We don't want channel construction to be a, a typical construction company where when you can no longer perform the physical part of the work, you're no longer valuable to the company. But then again, we can't take the employees by the hand and force them to plan for that. So what we do is we've put voluntary programs in place that are available to the employees so that they can plan for that day. That day when the physical part of it isn't something that they can perform any longer, but so that they can still be valuable in the industry that they've that they've trained in and that they've been in. People are really good to work with, a lot of good personalities. Um, as long as you treat, treat other people the way you want to be treated, treat them with respect, um, don't push people around. If they don't know something, show them how to do it. Don't just pass it off and maybe let, let you think they know how to do it. Um, it's, it's a learning experience, that's for sure. There's a lot of good tradesmen in here. You can learn something from someone else every day, uh, even though you might not feel it's the way to do it. There's always other options, and other guys can show you how to do things. I liken each one of the successful tradesmen in this industry to artists, because if you sit down and you interview them, and you ask them what is the one thing they love about their job, 
or about their trade, they'll tell you they like to walk away knowing they created something. Hi, welcome to Channel Construction. How can I help you? I'm here to see Julie. Hi, welcome to Channel. Let me take you on a tour of our new facilities. Here in the entryway, we have a lot of visitors who check out prints, so we've built a planned viewing room. On this side of the facility is our project management division. Most of our project managers visit job sites during the day, so you'll notice that there's quite a few empty offices. This is one of our Sabre estimators' office. He's at a project meeting right now, and Sabre is a very large five-year project that we're doing at Offutt Air Force Base. Brian uh, stays very busy with the estimating. There, It's a very fast-paced project. And here is what we call the war room. Our project managers uh, get together and schedule bid dates where they all sit down and crunch numbers, so to speak. And this is pretty much where it all happens. Derek McMullen is in the office over here, and he's our Ponca State Park project manager, so he's frequently out of the office. And by the way, he just had a new baby. You can see her picture on the side of the desk. Ron Hager's our Sabre manager. He oversees Brian Gaskill and all of the projects that go on at Sabre. And he's got his work cut out for him most of the time. This is Pete Bowden's office, the general manager. He frequently gets called out to other offices in the building. Uh, he oversees all of our project management and field operations division of the company. This is my office. And what's your role? I handle the human resources for the company and I oversee the safety and the benefits. Uh, in our old facility, we had very limited space, so this kind of feels like going from a trailer park to a castle. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jennifer Williams. She's our project administrator. Jenny administers all the projects, both for Saber and the Omaha location, and she assists in administering the projects for the This space is going to be used at a later date for additional staff. Um, we plan on continuing with our growth phase of the company. So we had to plan ahead with our new facility. This is Mel Schaefer. He's our general superintendent. He's probably one of the other persons in the company who is, stays extremely busy because he handles the entire field operation division in all job sites and all of the field staff that works on those job sites, including our tradesmen. This is our field conference room. This is where we get together with all of the field superintendents and foremen uh, each Friday morning to check on the progress of their job sites. And both of these office are, offices are considered temporary offices for field superintendents when they need to come in and work on a specific project. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. We're heading over to the corporate side right now. This is Jessica Foose. She's our receptionist and she also handles okay. accounts payable. All right. Kevin Pradhan uh, handles information systems. We have uh, one person in the company that works on a flex schedule. Her name is Beth Hyman. And what she is is our our Timberline coordinator. This is Sally Gallo. She's our payroll manager. She handles payroll for the entire company. This is Mark Rubin. He's our CFO. He handles all. Mike Channel, the owner of the company. You always have to identify uh, how you can do your job better. I remember when the office used to be underneath our stairs in our old house. It used to be about five by five room with just one desk and a bunch of drywall buckets to sit on for chairs. Uh, the growth's been uh, pretty phenomenal uh, and probably greater in, in terms of financial things than in terms of number of employees, but I mean the number of employees has gone way up, but actually the number of jobs that we're doing and the size and the complexity of the job has gone up a lot more.
dreams really can happen.